Okay guys, welcome back to the Frugal Homestead. So today we're gonna to be practicing our primitive skills, making wood ash soap, okay? Kind of give you an idea. And the way we make it, it comes out extremely hard, and if you let it cure, it'll hold up really well and won't break down when it gets wet like most soaps do. So, based on that, normally we do these primitive skills stuff outside, but there's 40 to 50 mile an hour winds outside, so we had to bring it indoors. Now to do this, I've gotta have the windows open because it does let off some fumes and some smells. Um, and you're also gonna hear our solar grid ties in the background. So I apologize now for all the background noise, but let's get started. Now the first thing you need to have is you're gonna need to have some hard wood ashes, okay? Some oaks, some hard maples, stuff like that. Resin-based woods are not as good for wood ash lye or wood ash soap. Um, pine, stuff like that, not a good choice. So you need a container and it needs to be stainless steel because this will react with aluminum. You do not want to use aluminum. You do not want to use aluminum coated stainless steel. You can get one of these cheap kettles here from your local Walmart for like 12 or 15 bucks. We use it for all kinds of different stuff. It's our outdoor kettle just for things like this. So when you pick your container, you want to fill it about a quarter of the way up with hardwood ashes. Then you want to fill the rest of the way with either rainwater or distilled water. There is too much chemicals, minerals, etc. in well or spring or city water to do this correctly. You will probably come out with a softer soap. It can be used, but it doesn't work as well. So we use rainwater. So I filled up the rest with rainwater, and I would normally put it over the fire, just stirring it every once in a while using a wood stirrer because prolonged exposure to this, once we start to reduce it, will break down plastic. So we use wood. And just so you guys understand, this is caustic. As it breaks down, it gets stronger. It's kind of like reducing gravy or something or reducing like chicken broth and it thickens and gets stronger, more potent, all right? It's kind of the same concept here. We are basically making our own lye from wood ash to make the soap. Now, when I say it's caustic, I'm not gonna get into the details and science behind this, but I'm gonna tell you that if you get this on your skin, once we get the lye solution up strong enough, or potassium, potash, whatever you wanna call it, and you get it on your skin, it will actually start to draw the fats out of your skin. So your hands are gonna instantly feel like grease. All right, so wear gloves. I'm not doing it right this moment, but we're just starting this process. I do have kitchen gloves, you will see them on later. So once you fill it with water, some people say to leave it soak for a day or two, that doesn't hurt. Um, we personally just put it on the stove on medium or uh, out on the campfire over a fire. We don't want it to boil over, but we want it to get really hot to suck out the potassium into the fluid. And then we basically cook that down into a lye solution. Now how you test your lye solution is very important. Some people use potatoes, we use an egg. And basically we'll put the solution in a smaller container, drop the egg in. When the egg floats, that means you're really close. When you can see a quarter of the egg sticking out of the top of the solution, that's when it's done. And that's when you're ready to start the next process to actually make the soap. Now, I'm about to go out and filter this. And basically what I mean by filter this is I'm gonna take a t-shirt and put it over a bucket. I'm gonna pour this through it and then wash my pan out with some more rainwater. And then I'm gonna put the actual liquid after it's filtered back in the pot and we're gonna start reducing that liquid. We wanna bring up, get rid of the excess water and bring up the solution level and make it stronger, all right? This would be a point where you're gonna to wanna to start watching your hands, your eyes, things like that. 
the same thing. We're gonna put it on medium, maybe a little higher. Basically, we don't want a full-blown boil. We want it bubbling, but we don't want a rolling boil. If you're out on a campfire to where it can boil over and won't hurt anything, you feel free to do a boil if you wanna speed the process up. So let me go out, get this filtered, I'll bring it back in, and I'll get back with you guys and we'll talk about the next step. Okay, got it filtered. You'll notice that there's still that tinge in there. You can filter it again if you want to try and get it clearer or let it cool and settle to try and separate it more. But I find it makes the soap have a nice gray, light gray color. So I haven't found it hurt anything. Now, this is actually a lot stronger than just say ashes and water because it's been, you know, basically reducing and cooking. Which means you really should use gloves when you handle this and filter it. We're gonna let it go here. I got it set on six, so just above medium. I'm gonna let this go for a while, start to reduce, then I'll come back when we're getting ready to test it. Alright, guys, so. We are getting to the point here where it's time to start testing it. Now we test it by taking a sample of it with an egg floating in it and see if it floats. Okay? Okay, and the egg is not floating. So, it does not have a high enough cook down content to make the egg float which means it's not ready now as you can see back here I have turned it up to high it's acting comfortably it's not bubbling up we've got plenty of head space it should be fine to go ahead and just let it boil down now I do usually have the fan running I turned it off so you guys could hear me better that said you want to start checking it especially when it gets to about halfway reduced you want to start checking it about every half an hour to an hour because you don't want it to go too heavy because then you have to add water back in but if you do have to add water back in start with a very small amount and work your way up right now we're just gonna let this boil a little bit longer uh, probably about a half an hour to an hour we'll come back and test again all right guys it's been going for about three hours you can see that it's reduced to like one eighth to one tenth of its original amount. It's time to test it. Okay, so you see how our egg's sticking out? It's almost the size of a quarter when the end stands up. It's about, it's bigger than a dime, so we're gonna let this run for a few more minutes, and then we're gonna measure out the amount because it'll be four parts of this lye solution to one part oil. You can use any kind of oil you want. I've found olive oil works quite well. We're going to be experimenting with vegetable oil today. So we'll measure out the amount we have, divide it by four, and add that much oil back in. Okay, so I rinsed out the pan a little bit to get rid of some of the leftover ash. We got one quart of material. So that's the first quart of material. Here's our second quart of material. Now I pour them off like this to try and get more sediment out. Now here's the tricky part. So we had eight cups of material, lye, lime, lye water material. So we're gonna add two cups of oil. Here we're using vegetable oil. The trick to this is just put it in super slow. Don't put it against the sides because it'll steam out. 
Just put it in nice and slow. The burner's set on medium, but like I said, if you're over a campfire, it really doesn't matter. But we just want to introduce the difference in temperature slowly. And as you saw, I handled that stuff without gloves on. That was a bad idea. Okay. So we got it all in there. Now we give it a real light stir. We don't want to go crazy stirring it. And we're going to slowly bring it up to the medium and then I'll take it a little bit higher. I know I don't want it at a full boil. But as we bring it up, what we're going to be looking for is it's going to start to reduce again. And then you're going to get what most other soap things will call a trace, which is means it'll thicken and then it'll start to have ridges when you pull the spoon through it. We're going well beyond that because if you stop when you start to get a trace, you're making a liquid style soap. A soft like a cream based soap. If you go until there's a standing trace on this, then you'll have a soap that'll harden but it'll break down fast in water. When you go to the part where it has a chemical reaction and it starts to bubble and expand up and look like it's got more mass, if you stop right at that point, that's what you want to use. Now granted at that point it won't go into the molds as nicely but you have to stop instantly once it starts to expand because after that it starts to dry out and make powdered soap. So basically you kind of got to watch it a little bit. I mean you don't have to hover but you want to be back at it every five or ten minutes to make sure that it's you know not going to that expanding point and past it. So I'll come back once it starts to thicken. Okay guys, you can see it rising up, the chemical reaction. Let me get it pulled off and poured. Alright guys, so we got some of the molds filled. We had some issues. Um, after looking closer at the vegetable oil we were using, it is 100% soybean oil and I don't think it's actually 100% soybean oil. So, best to probably stick to the olive oil or the coconut oil or your pure oils the higher end oils uh, you could even use lard but I would probably stay away from vegetable oil because this is this is not setting like it's pure oil I think it's got a byproduct in it or something but we'll let it sit for 24 hours pop them out I mean they're still soap they'll still work I just don't know that they'll harden up the way they should and we'll just have to wait and see but as I showed you before the stuff we made with the olive oil gets really hard and I know the coconut oil has a moisturizing factor and some vitamins in it so we'll come back in the morning and check it out see what we got alright guys it's been 36 hours now a disclaimer right off the bat and I have to admit this because I promised my wife I would my wife told me to stick to the tried and true recipe of using olive oil or coconut oil or lard to make these and I wanted to play Mr. Experiment and use vegetable oil well let me tell you something soap don't lie so when a product comes out not right I don't care if they say it's a hundred percent oil they've chemically done something to that oil now this is soap and it will work just fine it just won't harden up as good or shape or mold as good as if we use coconut oil or uh, olive oil. The problem is vegetable oil nowadays is made out of soybean oil and it's been heat pressed all right and I mean talking real hot and high pressure so it chemically alters the product which it comes out in the soap so that's my bad I take full responsibility for that but let's see what we came out with here you know if you want a good quality product, a good hard soap that's going to come out real nice like this, use coconut oil or use uh, olive oil. But let's see what we got here. 
give it a little stretch this way. Give it a little stretch that way. A little push. That's not too bad. That's kind of pretty. It looks okay. Pop one of the round ones. There you go. That one's design is kind of hard to see. But they're kind of cool. Kind of small. It's not a great product. They didn't set in the molds real well because, like I said, now I'll let these sit for three or four weeks. They'll harden up and work just fine. But to be honest, the product could be a lot better. Now, these molds are not as forgiving. So we shall see. We shall see. Let's try this one. Well, that came out okay. This is not bad. You can see the consistency is not quite right to make it look perfect. Now, you're never going to get it perfectly right with this wood ash formula, as you can see. But this is hard as a rock. I mean, this will last a long time if you make one of these. I mean, and you can do things like color them, flavor them, you know, scented, I should say, not flavored. You don't eat soap. At least I hope you don't eat soap. But this one we wanted to keep pretty basic. Came out pretty good. Like I said, I'll never use vegetable oil again. It's clear it's chemically been messed with. There's a nice starburst. It's clear it's been chemically messed with. So we won't ever bring vegetable oil back in our house probably again after this. Because the soap don't lie. That's one thing you guys are going to learn real quick. If a product acts up when you're making soap, there's something wrong with that product. Because the soap does not lie. Seems it came out okay. As you can see, we got like these two. They're still very moist. It just doesn't set up as good or as fast as it should. So, with that said... We hope that you guys enjoyed this little walkthrough on a basic primitive skill. It's not necessary to have. It doesn't produce the most gorgeous soap. But in realisticness, if you use the correct you know, oil in this, this soap will work for pretty much anything. It's great for cleaning greasy hands. You can use it to do dishes. You can use it to do laundry. Um, there's just so many uses. This is a good all-purpose soap. And this is essentially what the pioneers used. So you can know for yourself that it's time-tested. You know, it does produce results. It does work well. It is a very long process and not something you probably want to do on a daily basis. But as a project, I think it was really fun. I think you could probably just about have just as much fun by doing it with the drain cleaner style. But I like to take the time and... Kind of play with it, mess with it. So, I'm going to get the rest of these popped out. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys take a moment to like, share, and subscribe. And maybe join us in some other upcoming Primitive Skills videos. Until next time, I'm Tony with the Frugal Homestead. And we'll see you.